so when I started doing this last year, I started doing it in what I've now learned is called FIT 101, which is sort of the entry point. It's where most teachers start off. So I had my students all watching a certain video before they came into class. And then when they came in, we were all doing the same activities. So it was very structured, same activity the night before, sorry, same video the night before, and then the same activity in class. Which was awesome, it meant we had more time for discussions in class and class of group work, all those sorts of things, more time one-on-one -on -one with the students or in small groups. Um, and it meant that they, when they were interacting with that content, when they were watching the video, they had a lot more flexibility. They could pause it, rewind it, watch it as many times as they needed to as they were taking notes and all those sorts of things. But we were still pushing them through the content at the same pace. So they still only had the same amount of time to cover the activities or exercises, whatever it was in class. So what I do now, I have two sort of main models of ways I run my classroom. The first one is moving towards flipped mastery. So this is what I do with my seniors. So at the start of the topic, I give my students a topic outline, which lists everything they're required to do for that topic, whether it's videos, worksheets, activities, cracks if you have them in your subject, whatever it is. And they're given an end date that it all needs to be done by. So it's not 100% mastering learning, but it's moving in that right direction because they still have that flexibility within it. So within that whole topic, whether it's two weeks long or however it is, they have complete flexibility within that. Um, especially with seniors, I think that's really important and they really appreciate that because they can work around assignments that they might have coming up for other subjects or work or sport commitments outside of school and they can work around all of that. Um, anyone who finishes all that work before the due date is given an extension one and that can be whatever you think is appropriate, whether they need extra practice or something in particular. With my seniors, it's often just HSC, which is getting them to practice that interpretation of things. So an example of what a topic outline looks like, if I was doing this for juniors, it would look nothing like this. It would be more just a tick box checklist. But because this is for my year 12s, I've got, even though they don't have to stick to this, I put lesson dates down the side there. So that is an indication of roughly where you should be up to if you're going to get things done on time. But they can, that's just a guide. Um, I've got all the syllabus dot points, then I've got my translation of the syllabus dot points, and then all the resources down the side. So whether it's, like I said, videos, worksheets, textbook exercises, the class activity, whatever it is. Um, because everybody's moving their own pace through this, when I started doing it, I found myself every lesson going, walking around going, okay, where are you up to today? Where are you up to today? And that was fine, but by the time I got around the classroom, I completely forgot where everyone was up to. So I set up um, a Google spreadsheet that all my students have access to, and they can tick things off as they go. So it looks something like this. So it's got all the whatever they need to do, all the resources and exercises they need to complete across the top. And I've got three options there. They can click that they've done it, they can click that they've started it, or the little orange ones say completed, except I've got questions I need to ask you. So I've done it all, but I got stuck and I need help or something. So I'll walk in with that open, and I know immediately who I should be going and seeing to first, because they're stuck. Um, and then I can go and check in over once. You can also really clearly see who's falling behind and who you need to go and have a chat to about keeping on top of the work. The other model I use in my classroom is what's called the inflip, and Jeremy touched on this for primary school. I use this for my new ten class. So I just before I tell you what it is, I just want to describe to you the class that inspired me to do this. So like I said, year 10, got 24 students. They have been labeled as the bottom class for the last two years and they know it. So there's very poor engagement and poor motivation. Um, very low confidence in their mathematical ability. I've got a huge range of diverse learning needs. I've got two students on the autism spectrum, I've got dyslexia, four mild intellectual disabilities, and the list goes on. Almost every student is on our DLN list. Um, I also have a huge number of absences, and that's for a whole pile of different reasons. Some students have a pretty troubled home life and don't make it to school every day. Um, I've got one student who's an Australian skateboarding champion, so he's off competing in competitions all over the world. Um, so yeah, huge numbers of absences. 
Um, and within that, there's a huge range of mathematical abilities as well. So some of them, even though they're in the bottom class, are actually quite capable mathematicians, but for whatever reason, they haven't demonstrated that before, whatever that reason may be. So this is what I was faced with. Uh, when I know that I need to flip this class. I've, I taught them for about a week or two, traditionally, and I was dreading every single lesson I went to. I'm sure they were as well. And it's just incredibly frustrating. You're dealing with behavior issues and the rest of the class is sitting there not doing anything. Or you're pitching it right in the middle and there's kids who don't get it and there's kids who are sitting there incredibly bored and it was just not working at all. But I knew that watching videos at home wasn't just not gonna work for this class, for this group of students. They'd never been expected to do homework before in their lives. Or they'd never, they have been expected and they haven't done it, one of the two. Um, so I knew it wasn't gonna work, at least not to start off with. So, with the inflip, everything is done within class time. All the videos, all the activities, everything within class time. They have the option of doing stuff at home as well, getting ahead. And I have had students take me up on that, but the expectation isn't doing stuff at home. Um, but it does mean that I'm sort of quoting myself. I've got one version of me explaining things to people when they're ready. So when that student gets up to that concept, there's a version of me in the video explaining it to them. And then there's the me running around helping people when they get stuck. Um, students are working at their own pace, so you've got those students who need to work through things very methodically and take a while and wrap their head around the concepts. And you've got students who are powering their life, who are pushing themselves up to those higher concepts. I've also got that every individual student can be extended as far as they can be. So I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with math syllabus, but, but this is identified as a 5 1 class. But I've got students in there who are definitely capable of doing 5-2. So they get to smash through the 5-1 work and then move on to the 5-2 work, even while other people are still only halfway through that 5-1 work, if that makes sense. So they're able to go as far as they can. And again, like I said, I can stand up here and preach about how amazing this is. But one student who is renowned for his poor behaviour, um, renowned for his disrespect and poor engagement, uh, in the first week or two before I started flipping, I at one stage turned around and I found him standing on a table with a traffic cone on his head. So that's the type of shooting we're talking about. But he really genuinely, he summed it up really well, he really genuinely turned to me one day and he said, Miss, I like this better because we don't have to stop and move on when we're not ready. So they're getting to through the content at their own pace. Um, with this class, it's very structured the way I run it at the moment. Um, I'm planning on easing off on this throughout the year, seeing how we go. But at the moment, they have a booklet that they work through, um, and it's linked really closely to the videos. So that's an example of a page from the booklet, and the video is me going through the first chunk of that page. So it's very clear what notes, what examples, it's very clear what they have. 